Today we're going to look at using Drift again to generate kicks for us, a kick generator effectively. We're going to set up Drift with macros and some specific settings so that the Drift synth generates kicks for us. Um, we can then randomize these kicks, generate new ones, tweak them if we want, and then finally click here and save them as a drift preset for use in our music or whatever we want. So we'll have a look at how this is set up and then I'll show you how to build this rack if you're interested in that. Um, there, there are quite a lot of macro settings, specific settings that I've defined here to limit this instrument drift to just generate tones that are in the kick range. Um, I'll leave this up as a screenshot at the end of the video so that you can set this up yourself. Okay, let's have a look then what's actually going on. Let me just turn this down for a second. We have an instrument rack here which has uh, an instance of drift. That's it. I have set specific macros here and map them to various controls in the drift instrument. As I say, I've then defined limits for each of these controls, which allows us to generate effectively kick tones. You generate a tone, you then save it here, I click this, I don't know, pulse one, kick and I have my kick tone here saved in my drift presets for use later on. The build's quite quick. I think maybe we'll just go straight into it. Um, I say I've been doing a series of these videos where I take the instruments and limit them to generate specific instrument types. My last video was on generating bass tones with Drift. I use Drift because it's available in all of the Ableton versions, or at least Intro, um, Standard and Suite, those three it's available in. So this allows as many people as possible to, to use this idea in Ableton. Okay, let's have a look at the build then. To begin with, you'll need to put um, an instrument rack here, in instruments, instrument rack, drop that in here. This you can then expand with this icon here to get the macros. I've kept my original macros. Originally, you'll start with something like this. We just press these plus and minus buttons and they expand the, the macros for you. As I say, I've kept mine because they have the labeling in. We'll need a, a copy of Drift, an instance of Drift. We'll drop in there. Now we can set this up quite quickly. We will need to switch here the mode to mono. Keep this in for mono mode. We need to adjust the volume here on oscillator 2 to minus 6 for some reason. It's different to oscillator 1, I don't know why. Quirk. And then we can start mapping our settings here now. So let's go into the mapping function here. The low pass frequency, we can map that. Let's do that again. I always have to do that one twice for some reason. Low pass resonance map that here. The pitch modulation is here. The low pass modulation amount is here. Oscillator 1 mod amount is this value here. Map that. And we need to set this to be controlled by envelope 2. We'll be using envelope 2. Then we have the oscillator 1 shape here. The wave and finally, oscillator one octave value here, map that. Now we can set up our, our envelopes. We'll take the attack from envelope one, the decay, and the release here. The same for envelope two, attack, decay, and release. 
and then we'll just jump out quickly and we'll set the sustained values here of both envelopes to zero. Then finally we have here these two to map. One is the noise gain. This one here we can map the noise level. And then we have X, which is a combination of the high pass frequency here and a little bit of the mono thickness here, this value here. Right, so all we now need to do is just put the specific values in for these ones. These are the ones that basically constrain the instrument drift to generate tones that are at least in the, the kick drum area. And with a little bit of fine tuning, you can get them where you want. So we'll set these all up. This is a one millisecond for the attack and a maximum of 10 milliseconds. Then we have the decay, which is 300 milliseconds, envelope one and 600 milliseconds for the limit. Envelope one release is 10 and 1,500, which gives us one and a half seconds for the release. For envelope two, we have one again and six here, six milliseconds for the attack. For the decay, we have 300 and 600. Envelope 2 release is 10 and 750 milliseconds. Then we will restrict our low pass frequency to a range of 70 to 100 hertz. Oh, sorry, 200 hertz. Now, all these values, these ones here are uh, subjective. You could change this. You could go to 60 or 50 if you wanted a, a deeper kick drum. But this is the values I chose. And so you can set them up as you like. Then we want to have the volume here. One more actually thing we need to map here is the volume I've forgotten, which I'm, I've mapped here to the low pass frequency. So we'll map this here, the volume and we'll map it to this low pass frequency here. And we're going to invert this. So we're gonna set this to zero and this one to minus six. And what that is doing effectively, we'll see, is as the low pass goes down, the frequency is cut off, yeah? we're actually increasing the volume at the same time. Um, just a little trick so that once we get very sort of reduced frequency ranges, we still get a boost from our volume so that we can hear the tone, stop them getting muffled. You'll see that in a second, I'll show you. Okay, let's carry on here. We have the low pass modulation amount it has a setting of minus six and 50. The resonance I have set at 0.5 and 0.85 for the range. The noise gain is limited to zero decibels here. And oscillator one mod amount is 101, minus 100, 100, that's the same. The octave range here for oscillator one, I've set to zero or one, so we can get a random value of zero or one here. So it can sometimes be above the other oscillator, oscillator two, or the same as oscillator two. Then we have the oscillator shape, which I have restricted to 0 0.35 on the upper range. We then have pitch mod amounts is in a range of 20 to 80%. And finally, we have these X values here, which I have restricted the high pass frequency here to 100 Hertz. And the mono thickness, just a little bit of mono thickness, 60%. And that's it. So those are the settings. As I say, we'll give a screenshot at the end. Now, hopefully if I click the random, we should have 
something coming through here. Let's have a listen. There we go. Now, what I was explaining here was if I have uh, what I was trying to explain with the volume and low pass frequency connection is that if I have something with high frequency, if you see the volume, the volume goes down. But as I reduce it down here, so cutting off most of the frequencies, then I'm also increasing the volume level. So we get some nice thumpy kick tones. Okay, so that's it. Um, as I say, you can save the rack here by clicking it here. You'll find that then in your user library, this rack can be dropped into any project you're working on. Um, as always, I like to say, I hope it's of use to somebody. You can make use of it. Enjoy the rest of your day and uh, hopefully see you in the next video. Take care. Thank you.